Hi Long Range Hunting, welcome to episode 8 of our terminal ballistics testing of hunting bullets versus match bullets. Now today we're looking at hammer bullets, specifically their 214 grain boat tail hollow point hunter bullets. Now, these are their, again, hunting bullets. And you can see here we have what appears to be a wide cavity that diverts. Um, unfortunately, not only you can see here, but in the pictures, it's not the typical cavity. Over here is what you're wanting to see. You see a massive displacement. There's a large cavity um, where you can tell you've achieved that hydraulic shock over that 2200 feet per second. Um, this impact velocity for this test was 2650 feet per second. Um, but what has happened here is something that can happen with hollow point bullets and it's called necking over and what it is is a rapid displacement as that bullet tumbles and the reason it does this and it's something that happens with full metal jackets that's why you can have somebody in combat shot in the chest and have that bullet exit their leg um, <clears throat> or why people with the Sierra Match Kings have experienced where they'll shoot and it'll all of a sudden right when it goes in divert into a different direction the material itself of either, you know, if you're in a self-defense situation, law enforcement with a hollow point, um, the clothing can actually fill that gap and prevent it from expanding and basically effectively turn it into a full metal jacket. That's why bullets like critical defense and critical duty were created with a ballistic tip type for pistols and rifles. Great bullets, I use those for my home defense and carry. Um, and that's a big reason why ballistic tips in rifle projectiles, as far as like the ELD match, uh, Sierra tipped match king, uh, that's why those are there is to prevent that and give you a larger area and more reliable expansion because it acts pretty much as a wedge. Um, but what's happening here, this bullet <clears throat> and the hide had a perfect circular bullet hole. Just like every other time, I mean, it wasn't torn. It went straight through. The meat wasn't even damaged. It just simply had a hole through it from the projectile. So there was no dump of energy into there. And as you can see on the gel, it went in a couple inches into the gel. So it had multiple inches of penetration before it did it. And as it, that displacement starts to happen, what's happening is that bullet is turning and it's not actually hydraulic shock or hydrostatic shock. It's just a rapid displacement from that bullet force in its way. And if you look at the cavity as far as the width, it's basically this bullet forcing its way through and it's diverted out. Um, we now, I did run a whitetail test and an elk test. Normally, I don't do those at the same time. Um, one, I need to get, you know, some elk hide in in order to, you know, accurately replicate that. Um, I've only had been able to do two elk tests um, and this being one of them. I have, you know, plenty of whitetail hide in the freezer and uh, these hides are untanned. I'm using real meat. <clears throat> um, everything is anatomically correct for the depth of penetration, exact um, for vitals and everything. But I wanted to do it just for the simple fact that these were sent to me by a member. Um, really again, bud, I appreciate you sending me this, uh, sample box. Um, it's, it's very interesting what we found and it's valuable data, even though it's not optimal performance, it's still a very valuable data because this is to show <clears throat> what works and what doesn't. And this could be the difference between a long track job and possibly non-recovery versus a 
animal that's dropping dead on the spot or only going a short distance. There's a misconception that just because a bullet has killed, you can say, oh, well, I've killed with these, you know, you can kill with a full metal jacket. Literally, you can. You can drop an animal dead on the spot with the right shot placement with a full metal jacket. That doesn't mean it's optimal performance. And that's what we're after. We're here to show to the point optimal performance, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And these being a match projectile, but marketed for hunting, um, I, with the construction of it being a solid core bullet, it doesn't allow you that necessary i mean every bullet has a minimum impact velocity um and honestly for most hunting bullets the highest minimum impact velocity is around 2200 feet per second we were over 2600 feet per second for this and got this type of result <clears throat> and so it, it's not just a fluke both the gelatin for the elk and the deer with the different depths of penetration and impact resistance, both did the exact same thing. So it's one of those things that we got duplicate results with the same impact velocity with the same projectiles. Now we're gonna go to the uh, elk test real quick. I'm gonna show you the hit, the slow motion, look at the energy transfer as far as, or I should say lack of. Now you are going to see what looks like a temporary cavity, but it's just that rapid displacement. And all I want you to pay attention to is look at the sides. Now, normally when a bullet goes in, it expands and you get that, it's almost just like blowing it up like a balloon. It's in all directions. Now, <clears throat> usually it's not so much as far down because it's meeting that object and it's preventing it. So it's gonna be sides and up. It is going to, as you can see, that table is broken, and that is because of some of these bullets um, and that hydraulic shock actually breaking the table. Um, but this one is just very vertical, and it almost looks like a mohawk. Now you can see what I'm talking about there. It's it's not ideal. It's not something I would recommend you use. This is what I would classify as a bad hunting bullet or, you know, quote unquote match or quote unquote hunting. It fits both of those. It's kind of, you know, what you call a hybrid like the ELDX, but I would not recommend this bullet. Um, now we did get a slightly better result with the whitetail test. Um, that's not uncommon though, to get a slightly larger cavity. Um, just because of the fact that it is less media for that bullet to have to manipulate. Now you can see that one did get a little bit side to side, but both of those diverted and did not follow true through. And again, that's without impacting bone or anything else as far as, you know, how it can divert. A lot of people don't realize that bullets can change course. Um, you know, that's a common misconception with, you know, like headshots and stuff on the dome. People don't realize that you can actually ricochet a bullet off of a skull. You know, bones, if you don't hit them right and you don't get good bullet performance, can divert that bullet, especially with something that happens like this. And when it's already diverting with just this, uh, you know, a representation of shooting it as far as you're going in between the ribs and not actually impacting the ribs, you know, that would not be a great terminal shot if you get it in the right place is it going to cause enough internal damage to kill yes but again you can kill with a bow and arrow so 
it, you know, and you can put down large animals even with a small caliber. I have a buddy in Canada who puts down bison for their uh, their meat processing center, and he does it with a 22 caliber. So, I mean, you can drop a bison with a headshot with that. So it's it's one of those things that we, I'm here to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Straight, no sponsorships, no opinions, just straight facts on the matter. Um, I mean, what you should be getting, again, is this type of performance and this type of temporary wound cavity. But we didn't come anywhere near achieving what we should have with that. So um, I hope this has helped. Uh, again, thank you for sending me these bullets. This is some valuable information. Um, I'm probably going to revisit this one and see if I can stack gel all around and see if we can eventually capture one of these and see what exactly if there is any, you know, if the bullet's bent at all or any kind of deformation to the projectile itself. But until next time, everybody be safe out there. Happy hunting. that hard people hope you enjoyed this video make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and turn on notification bell so you won't miss out on any future video and happy hunting